one that has not the life of Christ, he has not turned. He cannot turn. He cannot change. He is today as he was yesterday. He is this year as he was last year. He is this period as he was in the first generation. He cannot turn. And But the people that believe in the Lord, how do you know them? They have turned. That he turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Turn in. Let's look at Acts chapter 19. The people that have turned to the Lord, what he did? Verse 18. And many of them that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds, evil deeds that they did before. Many of them also, which used curious arts, magical arts, occultic arts, idolatrous arts, many of them that used that in the past. You know, when you, are big, when you are born again, you're not continuing that occultism. You're not continuing in that, in that gang. You're not continuing in that secret society. You're not continuing in that witchcraft. You're not continuing in the use of that talisman. You're not continuing in that waistband, the juju ring in your hand. Many of them which use curious occultic acts brought the books together they didn't give the books as gifts to other people i don't want to perish i want you to perish have the material that will make you perish no i don't want to drink you have the alcohol i don't want to perish you can perish no i don't want to smoke anymore but all the secrets of god i'm going to sell to you no they threw them away if that thing is poisonous, if that thing is destructive, if that thing is dangerous, you don't pass it on to other people, occultic acts. You don't pass that on. I do not trust materials. You don't pass them on. Injurious, deadly, defiling clothes. Don't pass them on. There's a mighty change. And because you know you cannot use them anymore. Because they're defiling. They're deadly. They're destructive. You know it will destroy your Christian life. You don't dash them away. Give them away. No. You burn them. You destroy them. It says they put their books together. They brought those materials together and they bunched them before all men and they counted the price of them. They were willing to lose the money than to lose their souls. It says they found it 50,000 pieces of silver turning. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 6. Turn. That's what repentance is all about. Turn. That's what change, transformation is all about. Turn. We're looking at Ezekiel 14 verse 6. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Repent and turn. Repent and turn. That's salvation. Repent and turn. That's the only form of conversion recognized by God. Repent and turn. That's the only evidence that you have eternal life. If you have not repented, if you have not turned, there's no change. The same old, carnal, cruel, callous life is still there. There's no salvation there. There's no conversion there. There's no eternal life there. Repent and turn. Turn yourselves from your idols. 
and turn away your faces from all your abominations. That's the evidence that we know the Lord. If I were told in Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18, Versace, Therefore I will judge you, house of Israel, every one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn. That's the only way to have the mercy of God. Repent and turn. And when you go out to preach, when you go out to reveal to the people the way of the Lord, you're telling them, repent and turn. Sometimes you look at all these various crusades, open your meetings, and they gather hundreds of thousands of people together. And then the preacher gives a message. And it's a message of God is good and God is love and God is merciful and God is compassionate. He heals, He delivers, He provides. He gives the jobless jobs and He'll make the barren to be a mother of children. And He's going to brighten your future. And the Lord is going to do great, great things today. And if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior to bless your life and to heal your body and to, and to kind of take bad luck away from you where you raise up your hand and you then see hundreds of thousands of people raising up their hands. And then they say, put your hands together, clap for Jesus. What a great, great, mighty harvest. No, sir. There's no salvation without repentance. There's no salvation without turning. And dear friends, you spend all your life having all those massive crusades. And all you see is they raise up their hands and they wave it in the air. And then after we have gone, after we finish all that kind of mass meeting, they go back to their idolatry. And the church say they are doing follow up. And when you say you do follow up, you can't find a single soul of the people that have turned. From their evil no salvation no conversion a waste of time a waste of life the salvation is evidenced that you have turned that you change that a mighty conversion has taken place and then you are able to say the things i used to do i do them no more the places i used to go i go there no more this country, Nigeria, has large, big churches than almost any other country in Africa, maybe even in the world, apart from Korea. But all these thousands of people, have they turned? Have they repented? Millions of people in this country, religion, without righteousness and that will not take anyone to heaven the evidence that the gospel has made a mark in your life the evidence that the gospel has had a transforming effect in your life the evidence that the gospel has had a life-changing effect in your life is the repentance and eternity for every man, for every woman that you turn away from the works of darkness, you come to the deeds of light. And as we're here, and they call deeper life a mega church, a big church, I pray we'll even grow greater in Jesus' name. Not collecting sinners together. I mean, large congregation. Of sinners that have not repented, of sinners that have not turned. And when you come to minister, all of us who are ministering, preaching, singing, and any other thing that we do in ministry, the purpose of that ministry and the purpose of your section in the church, ministry to the people of God, is to emphasize one thing. The repenting and the turning. If your ministry does not have that effect, 
if your preaching does not have that effect if your organization administration does not have that effect if your singing does not have that effect it is worthless in the sight of the lord the reason why we minister and the reason why we have retreats and we have any other thing that we have is so that there will be repentance and turning that is the way we started that's the way we're going to continue we have no interest i have no interest in any big crowd or big people coming together gatherings coming together if we have no chance of transformation repentance and turning and the lord is going to do it in every life in jesus name ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30 second part of us of verse 30 repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die o house of israel for i have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth says the lord god wherefore turn yourselves and live ye turn 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 jonah chapter 3 jonah chapter 3 we're reading there from verse 4 in jonah chapter 3 jonah went to the city of Nineveh. those were people that were sinful exceedingly they had almost got to the peak of sinning and yet they turned and yet they repented and if those people that have gone to the very extreme of sinning if they could turn and repent the rest of us have not gone as far as they have gone we can turn to will turn in jesus name and he turned because of god not because of man not because of jonah not because of jonah not because of jonah he turned because of god there's a god in heaven the judge of all the earth jonah couldn't bring the judgment on them when he said yet 40 days and many of shall be overthrown jonah couldn't overthrow that city it was god he just came to announce the judgment of god coming upon the unrepentant sinner they feared god they believed god it was because of god they turned and if you are there you have come to this church you're not turning because of me you're not repenting because of me you're not becoming righteous because of me you're not getting saved because of me you're getting saved because you believe in god you are getting saved becoming righteous becoming holy turning away from all your sin from all your evil becoming a new creature in christ because you believe god that god judges sin and that if continuing sin private sin or public sin habitual sin or besetting sin you believe god that god will bring judgment the people who don't believe in god and they do whatever they do because of jonah because of man those are not believers jonah chapter 3 verse 4 and jonah began to enter into the city at this journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown and the people of Nineveh tell me the next two words tell me those next two words say that aloud they believed God God wasn't there in the physical only Jonah there yet 40 days and enemy shall be overthrown the man did not even mention the name of god god is going to do this but he knew and as you come to this church whatever you do 
They do it because of God. Whatever you believe, you believe it because of God. Yes, I preach the repentance, but you believe it because of God. Yes, I believe conversion, and I preach it. You believe it because of God. I preach holiness, sanctification. You don't believe it because of me. You believe it because of God. For no peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You believe it because of God. If you pull it down, you are not pulling it down because of me. If you don't believe it, you are not living it, not because of me. Because you don't believe in God. When you believe in God, here is the word of the Lord. And the people of Nineveh believed God and they proclaimed the fast. And he put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne. And he did, he laid his robe of royalty of the king from him. And he covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published, published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto who unto who you see when you hear the word of god the right attitude is to understand is coming from god in fact that's why what separated what distinguished the thessalonian believers because when they had the word of god they received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of God which worketh effectually in them that believe the things you hear of God whenever you hear it may come in an announcement if you come to it, it's an announcement by the group coordinator, by the coordinator. If that's what you think, you think, I'm free to do it or not to do it. Whenever you hear us preaching the word, emphasizing the word, and we read almost from cover to cover in the Bible, and we just say, well, that's his, you know, page, doctrine, that's his opinion, that's his idea. You're not going to do that. But when you accept, when you believe, this is the word of the Lord. That's why people do it. Then he tells us in verse in verse 10. And God saw their works that they they did what? Tell me out loud. You know, if this retreat, the power for your hour does not turn you you hear the word you hear the message the preachers are preaching the singers are singing the prayer warriors are praying intercessors are interceding and we read the word over and over and we're talking about the one single thing that will get you to heaven if in this retreat you don't turn judgment will come eternal doom damnation will come we we'll preach the whole word here not just encouraging people motivating people making them clap their hands but we prefer you don't clap your hands even after prayer there's nothing to rejoice about if you have not turned from your sin, if you are not born again, if there's no new life, if adultery is still there, fornication is still there, we used to sing, tell me your joy, if you are not born again, you don't know the Lord, stop all that clapping of the hands, after singing, after praying, after preaching, 
I don't need your commendation. All we need from you is that repentance. That's what God saw. Verse 10. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented, relented of the evil that he had said that he will do unto them. And he did it not. That is how they escaped the judgment of God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts, chapter 3. Verse 19 and verse 26. Acts chapter 3. Verse 19. Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore. Check up your life. Look at your life. Sin is deadly. Sin is defiling. And sin is damning. It brings you doom and damnation. Repent ye therefore. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. In verse 26, unto you, first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away, in turning away, in turning away. How many people? every one of you from your iniquities these person and believers that's what he manifested a total change a total transformation a total renewal in their lives point number three now expectant saints waiting for christ's second coming expectant saints waiting for Christ's second coming. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10. And to wait. And to wait. And to wait. That was a lively hope. It would be a rotting hope if they were not converted. And they were waiting for the second coming. That would be a rotting hope. A deceptive hope. But because they are changed. Because new life had come to them. Because a transformation are taking place, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, the one coming again, is the same Christ, the one who went to heaven, the one who died for us, the one who was buried three days, and the one who rose again the third day. And the one after 40 days of having infallible proofs showed himself unto his disciples alive and was taken up to heaven. That's the same one that is coming back again. And these Tesana believers, they knew that. And they were waiting for his son from heaven. Have you noticed? I'm sure you have not, you have not noticed this. But in every chapter of 1 Thessalonians and second thessalonians the coming of christ is spoken about that's in chapter one look at chapter two in chapter two we're looking at verse 19 for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are you are, are not even ye in the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming at is coming look at chapter 3 chapter 3 verse 12 verse 13 and the lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we 